Good morning. I'm Sanford Unger, and I welcome you to the Goucher College campus for our 122nd spring commencement. <clears throat> Under the big top here on the Winslow Great Lawn alongside the Athenaeum. And this is not a no good, horrible, terrible, very bad day. This is a wonderful day, and we welcome you all. We are simulcasting our ceremony today for those who can't be with us in person or some who are elsewhere on campus. So I'd like to ask the class of 2013 and our guests here on campus to greet the alumni, alumni, family members, and friends who are with us online. Hello. This has been a challenging year in many respects in the larger world, as well as here inside the Goucher bubble. It remained very difficult for a college like ours to escape the impact of national and global economic turmoil, and for many Goucher families to climb out of the Great Recession. Sadly, today's national political environment sets a poor example for young Americans who would like to help solve the serious problems they see around them. But when our own values are occasionally tested, we are lucky to be able to, reply, to rely upon our community principles of respect, inclusion, communication, service and social justice, and responsibility. Fortunately, this community has great resilience and strength. We keep talking, we re-examine our processes until we achieve new levels of harmony and understanding. One challenge we all face is the unrelenting attack, and there's no other word for it, the attack on liberal arts education. People who should know better are proclaiming that only certain majors are worthwhile in college because they allegedly lead directly to high paying jobs. The governor of Florida, I'm told, was outraged when he heard that his daughter was taking a course in anthropology. Imagine that, anthropology. We have enough anthropologists in Florida, he said. Well, that's, that's the equivalent of political slapstick, but I did hear one distinguished researcher and social commentator on the radio the other day lamenting the state of things. How, she asked, can we persuade these young people today not to focus on such useless subjects as history and philosophy? Well, we have an answer at Goucher College. We should not, and we will not, try to tell our students to narrow their scope down to allegedly marketable skills defined by politicians and efficiency experts. <laughs> of course. There is a great need for reform in American higher education. And one very important agenda, uh, agenda item is that costs must be brought under control. But we know, the students graduating today well know the importance of learning how to understand and solve problems in a broad range of disciplines in the natural sciences, the humanities, and the social sciences. We will continue to teach our students how to read carefully, think critically, write clearly, speak articulately, and devote themselves to an understanding of the human condition and how to improve it. We will remain dedicated to the idea that a liberal education in the arts and sciences is the best career education of all, and we will help our remarkable students launch their lifetimes of learning. We will, above all, continue to transcend boundaries. Let me tell you a bit about this graduating class. 
The 329 students in the class of 2013 participated in 388 unique study abroad experiences in 60 different countries. Goucher's participation rate in international education sits at 118% of our students. How does that work? 18% of our students go abroad more than once, while the national average is still under 5%. In this class, 50 students studied abroad twice, three studied abroad three times, and one, incredibly, studied abroad five times in five different places. Here, and he knows who he is. Here is a partial list, just a partial list, of what Goucher students from the class of 2013 have done. They have studied post-genocide, restoration, and peace building in Rwanda. They taught in rural and township schools in South Africa. They organized a major international performing arts festival for the theater of the oppressed in Paris. They learned about biodiversity on Bioko Island in Equatorial Guinea. They photographed the Tour de France bicycle race for the French government. They studied at the American University of Central Asia in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. They performed in dance productions in Arezzo, Italy. They worked with a women's empowerment center in Rabat, Morocco. They taught English as a second language in Peru, in Greece, and in China. They interned in the British Parliament. They studied wildlife management in Tanzania. They enhanced their artistic portfolios in Glasgow, Scotland. They interned in Santiago, Chile for the United Nations Commission on Latin America and the Caribbean. They worked for the City Welfare Institute in Tianjin, China. They interned at the Louvre and other museums in Paris. They worked, to, they worked to establish a music program in the village of El Rosario, Honduras. And they interned at the Department of Social Welfare in Cape Coast, in Cape Coast Ghana. Just a partial list. And what are they going to do when they leave this place? Again, just a short list. They will study chemical biology at Harvard. Journalism at Columbia University. Art history at Oxford. International relations at the University of California in Santa Cruz. Conflict security and development at the University of Bradford in Yorkshire, England. Experimental physics at the University of Wisconsin. Global public health at Boston University. Information Science at Pratt Institute in New York, and Pure Mathematics at Brandeis University. They will become doctors and lawyers, dentists and pharmacists, and they will know more because they have a liberal arts education. They will teach English in Japan and South Korea and they will track the movements and development of hyenas in Kenya. Six of them will work for Teach for America in, e in Eastern North Carolina, Southern Louisiana, New Mexico, Detroit, Nashville, Baltimore, and the Mississippi Delta. Others will become involved in local or national politics, make music, dance, and act. Some will make mischief. These students may not know how to make widgets, as some would have them do, but they are prepared to work to improve this community, this country, and the world. I am immensely proud to have been associated with all these students during their time here, as are the Goucher faculty and staff, and we have learned as much from them as they have learned from us.
to quote the biography of the student speaker at yesterday's baccalaureate ceremony, they are ready to step courageously into the unknown, well fostered by their experiences together. Please join me in congratulating them. couple traditions to observe. It is customary at Goucher for our graduates to extend their thanks and congratulations to their parents, spouses, and all who've supported their efforts to reach this important milestone. I know I speak for the class in extending to you, <coughs> excuse me, extending to you their affection and gratitude for your constant concern, your patience, and your continuing understanding and support. I join with our graduates as they rise to applaud their families who've done so much to make this day possible. We also want to recognize the extraordinary members of our faculty and staff at Goucher who have made this day possible. I would ask that all faculty members and all staff members of this college who are present under the tent, please rise. I think that says it all. <laughs>